Welcome to Oxford Presbyterian Church and the communion table here within the sanctuary. For 2,000 years, Jesus has been gathering with seekers around tables in which strangers have their eyes opened, and we recognize the presence of our living God right in our midst when we share food together. This allows us to enter into the text that we're studying in Acts. In fact, in Acts chapter 6, as the church in Jerusalem after Pentecost was growing by leaps and bounds, there developed two different groups, two different factions, and they were divided by language. They were both Jewish ethnic groups, but one group spoke Greek, and the writer of Acts calls this group the Hellenists. Another group spoke Aramaic from Galilee and around Nazareth and Capernaum, and the writer of Acts calls that group of Jewish individuals the Hebrews. Well, at the church in Jerusalem, the Hellenists felt that they were not receiving as much food as the Hebrews. Again, both Jewish groups, but divided by language. So in, in a real example of honesty and candor and, and speaking truth, those Greek speakers approached the Aramaic speakers and said, there has to be a better way. And so the apostles met together and decided to have the church elect individuals who might serve the table. And from this Greek word, we get the word deacon, those who serve. Both the Greek-speaking Jews and the Aramaic-speaking Jews thought this was a great idea. And so they elected seven, filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom, to help serve the entire congregation. And the writer of Acts says they did not hesitate to share this good news with those around them. This reminds me of the poem by Mary Oliver, Don't Hesitate. I'd like to share it with you now. If suddenly and unexpectedly you feel joy, don't hesitate. Give in to it. We are not wise and not very often kind. Still, life has possibility left, and perhaps this is life's way of fighting back, that sometimes something happens better than all the riches and power in the world. It could be anything, but very likely you notice it in the instant that love begins. That's often the case. Whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. I love that last line. Joy is not made to be a crumb. Friends, this life, with all of the abundance that we have in Jesus Christ, is not made to be a crumb. In fact, joy is discovering that when we gather with others in communities of faith, and when we gather with others around tables, joy is made of a loaf. There are challenging times in life. And when we lean into that, we find that joy is made to share. This week, friends, may you finish the statement, joy is. How do you finish that line? Joy is what for you? And also, May joy in your life come as you answer Christ's call for you. May joy come as you share the good news of abundant life with those around you. Peace be with you.